Uh oh, looks like my heat pump's not going into defrost for some reason. Oh well, looks like another good excuse for a video. You may recognize this board right here in another one of my videos or two of my videos or whatever, but I rather suspect that this defrost board is not working because I've been watching and it just has not even been going into defrost at all. So, uh, now, I don't have the exact replacement board for this, but what I do have right here is one that will work. Okay, and I've, you've probably seen me showing one of these defrost boards in my videos too. Everything's going to hook up pretty much in the same way, but you see that Molex plug right here, okay? Well, that's going to have to be cut, and I'm going to have to put some uh, solderless connections on it so they can connect them to these terminals down here. All right, I've, ins I've unscrewed this board from the... Uh, cabinet. Uh, you see now this board right here takes these types of uh, standoffs. Uh, these like metal standoffs. Well that's okay. Um, the new board here takes uses these plastic standoffs. Um, and now to uh, put this in place what I could do see now these will simply go inside these holes, but as, as you can see these holes are just a little bit on the small side for for these standoffs to push through. So I'm going to have to make these holes just a little bit larger. I'm going to start with the 964 bit because I don't want to whore out this hole. Goes. By the way, for those of you who are wondering, I do have the power off. Let's see if this fits now. Uh, nope, not really. Still a little bit too small of a hole. So let's, uh, now I'm going to try a uh, 5 30 seconds drill bit here. Jeez. All right. Let's see. Let's see if that works. And that's perfect. Okay. I just got to do the rest of them. All right. I got all four of these standoffs in place now. And I'm ready to uh, put the a new board into position. Right in the place here. Um, let's see. I've got to kind of line up. I've got to sort of line everything up. Okay. And just push it in and there it is it's all set into place now I just have to wire it in for the most part these boards will wire uh, much the same way wire for wire um, except for this area here with the Molex plug which we'll go into we move our fan wires here up here to these fan terminals and here we go. All right, that's in place. Next, next, I guess we can put our uh, two contactor wires uh, where they go, right up here. And there we are. See, We've got our two contactor wires put in the terminals. Next. We'll go ahead and put our, uh, th well, this, this system does not have a high pressure switch actually. It's just got a jumper wire to it. Uh, so we'll take this, pull off this jumper right here, and we'll put it right here on the uh, PS2 uh, slot, which is for like a high pressure switch. Uh, there it is. Wires, the jumpers on there. Next, we'll pull the jumper for the <laughs> looks like this doesn't even have a low pressure switch all right uh, so just got a jumper uh, pull these this jumper off for, where the low pressure switch should go all right yep, see put the uh, low pressure switch jumper in place I, I rather disagree with this type of system I think 
this is just going to be another reason for another making another video about pressure switches but anyway uh, all right next is going to be the uh, uh, reversing valve uh, wires I'll, I'll pull them off of the uh, old board and they're going to go right up here on the new board I want to take a little moment here to explain something about these wireless connectors, especially uh, this type right here. What is always a good idea uh, to do after you remove one of these connectors off a board and you're going to be using it on another board, uh, you might want to take something and just crimp this down just a little bit. Otherwise this connector is going to uh, be really loose on the terminal. This should give me a nice connection now since uh, I did crimp it. Okay, should not really fight you so much but you know give you make you uh, work for it. <laughs> you want it to uh, um, you know not be too easy to push in because if it goes in too easy it's going to come out too easy you don't want that either next I'm going to disconnect the defrost uh, thermostat wires off of this, this old board and I'm going to connect them right here on the new board right where they're supposed to go okay right there okay now all we have to do is I guess let's see we'll pull off this Molex plug next um, that's not too difficult usually all right it did come out pretty easy now we have these wires here to put on these terminals but like I said before putting this uh, particular uh, uh, Molex plug on there isn't going to happen so I have to cut these wires and connect them uh, one at a time down here to this board. And I believe in doing things one at a time. This yellow wire here, okay, uh, is for your uh, Y call, and meaning for for your compressor. Let me cut that and. Uh, there we go. See that'll go right where. All right, that should go right where it's supposed to go. Let me uh, now. I have to uh, uh, crimp a connector on there. There. I, all right. I strip the wire. Now uh, this can. Whoops. I'm gonna don't come apart on me while I'm trying to do this and hold the camera at the same time. Uh, this can go right on there, and I can take my crimper tool. Crimp that right on there. My crimper tool has a couple different slots for uh, you know, if you have insulated connectors or non insulated. I selected the one for insulated uh, connectors, and there it is. Okay, it's on there and it's ready to be plugged into right here for Y. Okay, there it is. Here's O for orange, and it's important because uh, you want to make sure you get the right board too. If you have, uh, if your old board is has an O, okay, like this one does, it means that it has a uh, cooling active reversing valve. You better make sure that the defrost timer that or defrost board that you're buying has a uh, an O as well okay for a uh, the same kind of a reversing valve that would be cooling active in this case uh, if it says B then that would mean that it's a heating active type of uh, reversing valve next would be R okay which is 24 volts and here's R or you know the red wire and this will go right here on um, on R okay and just to save a little 
commenting. <laughs> Uh, this R here, uh, you would use this section, this, this particular R slash R of V, okay, in uh, some other type of applications. All right, next would be C for common, and the black uh, wire right here was the common wire, so we'll put that right here um, where it says C, right in there. Slide that right on that terminal. It will go somehow, I'm sure. Okay. Next is the uh, W for emergency heat for the most part. Like when this goes into defrost, this W will energize and will energize your heat strips inside. And the W wire, which is going to be kind of a violet color in this case, will go right here on W on the board and there we have it this job is done except for one thing yet and that's gonna be we're gonna have to actually test it out uh, to test this all I did was take a jumper wire and connect it here to my R terminal and the uh, <clears throat> Uh, control voltage coming into the condensing unit and jumpered it over to my Y terminal here uh, making sure that it can get a call for the compressor and it seems to be running great right now in heat. Uh, now of course I did not connect the jumper to the uh, orange wire right now because that would give me a call for cooling. So I think we can call this done.